Hey guys, so today we're in my backyard. We're doing something a little bit different here. I don't know if you can see. I built this shed in 2015, 2016, somewhere around there, and I used T111 siding. And uh, let's see right down in that area. The weather is starting to get to it. I think I know why. It's pretty close to the ground and it's an organic material. It's going to rot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all the T111 along the bottom edge of the shed. There's more shed over here, obviously. So there, I had the same thing going on, but I just kind of put a Band-Aid on the problem and covered it up. Bad move. What I'm going to be doing is cutting that out all the way around, all the T111. I'm going to be replacing it with that. That's PVC siding. So the bottom nine inches of the shed is going to be covered with that stuff. So hopefully that'll prevent any future rot. So first part, the first step is to get all the trim off. Um, so I'm going to start by taking all these vertical boards off. I think they're just nailed. It's been a while since I looked at them. I'm going to start by cutting out the caulk though. Just got a razor knife. It's going to score along here. And I can see that I nailed it and probably nailed it pretty well. Knowing me. Just keep on working at it there. I'm going to get a pry bar and slowly just work it off. And once you think you've got the caulk reasonably figured out, reasonably cut, I usually take a five and one and I'll just tap in there and kind of break the rest of it. I can see where I nailed it now. Of course, I did an awesome job at that. I think we'll be okay. The objective is to cause as little damage as possible because I do want to reuse this trim here. It's not cheap stuff, it's PVC. It is rot proof, which is great, but it hits you in the pocket. I think all the PVC I bought was probably 120 bucks for those pieces you saw sitting over there. And you can use the same technique in your house too, if you're removing baseboard or whatnot. You always wanna cut the caulk though. No jokes, please. See, there's some rot down here I didn't even know about right in the corner there I don't see I'm beginning to wonder what people love about t111 at this point seems to be just a headache can I pull these no not yet So just keep working at it until it pops out. You may start to see nails pop out. What you can do is you can take your five and one and kind of use that to protect the trim and use your flat bar or a hammer to just yank the nail out like that. Then you way you don't mess up your trim any more than you have to anyway. Keep track of your nails. You don't want to step on those. Gonna have a bad day. So I got another one right here. We'll yank this one out and we'll clean the trim up and actually use the same nail holes. Do I have any others here? So you can see this piece is coming loose. Maybe you can't because you're looking down. Move you guys back a little bit. There we go. There we go. One piece down. Got a few nails to pull out, pull out of the back. You can see my shed used to be a different color. Blast from the past. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on this piece here. Uh, 
uh, bottom board was screwed in, so this one will be should be a little bit easier to remove. Forgetting about the caulk, I'll take my impact drive, but buzz out these screws. I'm not going to be reusing this board. Apparently, I use different size screws. Jeez, what was I thinking? Got all the screws out. Just going to run a blade across it, and hopefully, this thing will just fall off. Um, I'm not as concerned about salvaging this board because I'm not going to reuse it. I'm going to be using that new 12 foot section you see behind me. It's actually taller than this one. So same as before, we're just going to run this blade and hopefully it'll fall right off. Let's see, is it going to fall right off? Maybe, sort of, kind of, maybe. Pretty close to falling right off, wouldn't you say? Time to help it along a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing on this corner and this piece right here. So I got this side loose, gotta move on to this side now, pop that loose. A lot of caulk on this side, not a word. No one say a word. Whew. This side's a little more manageable. some of these nails out.
Now one thing that's going to be interesting with this shed is there's steel that anchors the, the wood framing to the concrete slab below it. That's required for Florida hurricane code. So I'm going to have to set my blade depth very carefully unless I want to chew up that blade and go into the steel. So I might go a little shallow on the blade depth and maybe leave some of the T111 intact and just kind of rip it off. Maybe, I don't know, I guess we'll see how that goes. But this piece is dangling in the breeze now, so I'll rip this off. Okay, so the last piece of demo is this uh, one by two in the corner here. It's painted the same color as the house, so you can barely see it. So I'm gonna pull this out because what we're gonna do, gonna do is we're gonna run a circular saw along the bottom of the T111. We're actually gonna, not gonna be able to get it into that corner down there. When I say down there, I mean down there. So what I'll probably have to do is get one of those oscillating tools and just kind of cut out the rest of the T111. We'll see how that goes though. So we're gonna razor blade this one, cut it out. Same thing with the other side of the shed by the door. Okay, got that piece in the corner ripped off. Got some paint repair to do all the way at the bottom there, but that's no big deal. There's actually some grass growing up in that crack there. Now we're gonna do that piece in the corner there. Same thing as the other side. Okay, I think that completes the trim removal. That piece came out pretty cleanly too. Just lots of caulk. It's gonna be fun to cut around that outlet there. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do there. I have to think about that one. Cause we gotta cut literally right there. Might be able to go in from the other side and use that, that uh, oscillating tool. I don't know, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah, all the trim's gone. Now we gotta make a mark the thickness of that new trim because we're gonna go a little bit higher. And uh, then we'll make our cut horizontally with a battery powered circular saw. Let's measure our new trim board. So it's about nine and a quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna make a, a mark along the bottom section of the shed all the way around, nine and a quarter inches tall. And that'll be our cut line. And again, that's gonna be tough back there, but I'll figure something out. I have faith. Okay, I took a couple of the straight nails that I pulled out. I put one here, one down there over the other end, and one all the way off in the distance over there you guys probably can't see. I'm gonna use that to hold my chalk line. So we'll snap a chalk line, we'll see what nine and a quarter looks like. Okay, I got my chalk line. Okay, there's our cut line. <clears throat> Let me just do the same thing on this side here. I don't think my mic's gonna be long enough. Okay, so we have our cut line. I'm just gonna double check it, make sure it is exactly where it needs to be and that things aren't gonna get crooked on us. I'm also gonna take a four foot level and make sure that that line is reasonably level.
Yeah, I'm not too thrilled with that. I think I'm going to redo it. These string lines just aren't turning out the way I would hoped. I've done it maybe twice and, I don't know, they're just not looking right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a screw in the end of that long 12-footer. Um, and let me think. Then we'll level that board and we'll make a mark on the T111 where it sits because that board should be fairly level. Uh, and I notice here that the T111 is hanging down on that long side, maybe an extra inch or so. Yeah. But I don't think I want it to sit that low on this side. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take that eight footer, scribe a mark here along that short side and transfer that to the 12 footer, maybe? Let's give it a shot. All right, so I got it screwed in at that far far corner there, just temporarily. I'll level this off here and put a screw in it. I think this is gonna work better. Hopefully. Good. Ugh. So something like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take that 12 footer, lean it up against there and kind of do the same thing at that same height. So something like this. I mean, I'm being extra super paranoid about this being level and looking good, but I don't know. It's just a shed, right? Let me screw in that other end. So about like that. Okay, I got all three sides temporarily screwed on just how I want it. Now I'm gonna get a, sh a Sharpie and scribe that line on the T111 so we can cut it. I know what you're thinking, why didn't I just drop it an inch or so and use that as a guide for the circular saw? I would have liked to have done that, but I don't think there's enough ground clearance everywhere around the shed. That would have made the cut a lot easier and certainly a lot more consistent, but I just don't think it was gonna happen. Um, yeah, so. I scribed the perimeter with a Sharpie. Uh, got a little bit of Sharpie on the, on the trim, but we can clean that up. Now let's take the trim off um, and start cutting, I guess. I'm gonna set my blade depth to be just shallow of the T111's thickness. Because again, I don't wanna cut those steel straps or hit them with the blade, because that's instant death for the blade. So I'm just gonna use this edge here to get a, a depth for my blade. First, I'm gonna do a couple shallow cuts, maybe uh, an inch or two off the bottom, just to make sure that uh, when this new beam is up, we're going to be covering the rim joist, because that's what one of the things that this protects. And I'm glad I checked, because had I done this cut at that level, granted it's now Sharpie and kind of immor uh, immortalized, but deal with that later, um, the rim joist would have been exposed. So I'm gonna drop this line down about an inch all the way around. I lied, I think I can use it as a ledger just to steady the saw. So you'll see, I, instead of dropping it down an inch, I dropped it down two and an eighth, which is the distance between the blade and uh, the edge of the shoe down there. So I dropped it down a total of two and an eighth, which should give me um, about an inch drop. So that should be below the ledger, hopefully. All right, guys, let's do it. 
I got my ears and eye protection on. I know you guys are really concerned about that, so there goes nothing. a long cut. Oh. Alright, hopefully I went all the way through. Okay, I'm going to take out that bottom ledger and we'll see what things look like. It's still fastened because there are some screws below the cut line, so I'll go ahead and take those out. Okay, one piece of board just fell off. It's a good sign. Other pieces coming off. You can see these bugs just love me today. Okay, that's all cut out. Let's test fit our new trim board and see uh, how it fits. I think that's gonna work out perfectly. So now we just gotta do those cuts on the front and the back. Do those off camera, it's getting hot. My apologies, apologies for uh, not giving you guys the play-by-play -play here, but uh, I'm kinda up against the clock here with the weather. It's getting pretty hot over here. So I couldn't fit the circular saw on this corner. And apparently I can't, play. there we go. Couldn't fit the circular saw in that corner, so I scribed a line. I'm going to use this uh, Bosch oscillating tool. Hopefully.
you get the idea. Gotta switch blades, I think this one's smoked. I'm gonna try to get behind that conduit as best I can so I don't damage too much. You can see we're starting to get some rot on the rim joist down here, so it's good that we're doing this. Wait, who's this we? I'm doing all the work. You guys are just watching. There we go. Yuck. But I think we caught it in time. Still fairly solid. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, here goes nothing. I'll try and position myself so you guys can see, but I think it's more important that I can see than you can see, no offense. Getting a blade on the oscillating tool. These things are awesome, by the way. If you don't have one, highly recommend it. I'll give you a link in the description for this thing. Ugh. Wear up that cut a little bit. Now that all the demo's done, I'm gonna go around and clean up that the uh, rim joist and uh, start priming and painting everything just to, so hopefully this doesn't happen again. I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to the exposed edge of the T111 along there, along there, and so on. I did find some rot in the door. You can probably see where I poked a hole in it with my finger, not a hole, but an indentation there. T111 sucks. I don't think I'll ever use it again. It's a lot of freaking work. All right, I'm gonna do some priming and painting. You guys don't need to see that. Yeah, the sun's starting to beat down on me pretty good now. So, as you can see, I primed all of the area where we cut, especially the bottom edge of the T111, just to make sure that no water can get in there. What we're gonna do after that is then painted is we're gonna put what's called a Z flashing under there. And then we're gonna, um, that'll direct the water over the outside of the new trim board. And then what we'll do is we'll caulk really, really heavily where the T111 meets that Z flashing. And hopefully that'll prevent any future water issues. That said though, I think I'm gonna call it a day because again, it's getting really, really hot over here. Uh, it's South Florida. It's almost September, I think. And obviously, I'm on the west side of the house, so the sun is beating down. All right, guys, I think I'll pick this up either maybe during the week uh, after work or maybe at lunch or perhaps uh, next weekend. So the next step is to install the Z flashing, hopefully. This piece gets tucked up under the siding right here, and this piece acts as kind of a conduit for water that comes down the siding or the front of the siding and falls over this edge over that piece of plastic on the bottom. So also should help prevent water from getting in behind the siding, I hope. Um, might be kind of an exercise in futility with this, uh, with this plastic stuff, but it's good practice. That's what you're supposed to use. Appears I may have shot myself in the foot with all this paint, because now the paint in the wood, uh, or the paint in the, paint has sealed the siding to the framing. I can't get this up underneath here, even after removing a, or loosening a couple of the screws. So I might have to run a razor knife under here and cut the paint. 
Got the drip edge in there. Uh, what ended up working the best was scoring the paint line with a razor knife. And I used this five in one tool to just kind of, you know, pry the siding away from the building a little bit and then shove the, the, the drip edge up there. It wasn't easy, but got the hardest part done. This is the longest section. So I got all the sheet metal uh, flashing cut for this long side right here. So I'm just installing this one trim board. Um, and keep in mind, all these unfinished edges here, those are gonna be covering up by that corner trim that I already took off. So I'm just gonna shove this one last piece up under that, that molding or that uh, Z flashing, and then we should be good. There we go. I'll have to figure out a way to cover up the exposed edges of the Z flashing so people don't slice their legs open. It's pretty, uh, pretty intense. I'm not worried about the corners again, because that'll be covered up by the corner trim. Um, but just like areas like this, I don't know, maybe I can beat them down with a hammer. Or, I don't know, maybe just tuck it up in there. That kind of worked. I'll figure that out later. I got the Z flashing all the way around. I'm about to put up the last piece of trim board. You can see there I had to notch it for the door. So I just did that with a, with a circular saw. Just measured the cutout. Um, last step is going to be to caulk between the T111 siding and the Z flashing just so um, moisture doesn't wick up into the T111. We did paint it, but again, this is belts and suspenders. I never want to have to do this job again. This sucks. Okay, got that piece fastened up. You can see uh, with the shed door open, you can see the, the wood planking there. Uh, the, uh, it's a five quarter board. And you can see uh, the, the screws that screw the trim board into the rim joist I kept up high because I'm gonna put a piece of drip edge, which you can see right there, over that uh, exposed wood just to keep water from getting in there and wreaking havoc. So I'm gonna cut that drip edge down to size. There's the piece of drip edge I was talking about. I'm gonna secure that with a couple of roofing nails. I wish there was something a little bit thicker than this stuff because with all the equipment in the shed that goes in and out of it on a regular basis, that drip edge doesn't really last all that all that long, maybe a year or so, a year or two before it gets all banged up. And But it's all I have right now. I guess I could get a piece of angle iron or something, but this works well enough for now. But that achieves the objective of protecting the wood. Let's get a couple of roofing nails and smack it in. Okay, I got four roofing nails. Smack one in here. Probably only use three roofing nails. Makes it easier to replace later on. I got four just in case one goes flying, which they often do. Feels like this one's about to go flying. Clearly I'm not a roofer. Okay, we'll do one in the center. Or thereabouts. Maybe here-ish. There we go. That'll do. All right, now it's time to start caulking the crap out of everything and putting the trim back on. Next step is to caulk between the T111 and the uh, Z flashing. I'm gonna use a paintable caulk. Pick this up at Lowe's. So I'm just gonna cut the tip. I don't know how many of you guys know this or not, but you can actually cut the tip of a tube of caulk with the caulk gun. There's a little insert right there and a lot of caulk guns have a little little needle thing to, to puncture the, the tip if you need it. Not every tube does though. And this is a paintable silicone, so this should be waterproof forever. It's white, don't really care what color it is, kind of paint over it. Make sure you get a paintable silicone if you want to be able to paint it to match the rest of the building. It's really quite simple. I'm going to glove up. I'll show you how to paint or to caulk that corner there, and you guys can use your imagination for the rest.
just like that guys probably doesn't look so hot from here but again we're gonna paint over it so it doesn't really matter I'm gonna do that around the rest of the perimeter of the building okay I caulked around the perimeter of the shed I know it looks like crap now but again I'm gonna paint it to match so I'm not too worried about what it looks like right now and don't worry about the corners because we have the trim to go on there that corner that corner where it meets the house and so on so I would say at this point the shed is probably dried in meaning if any water should it rain pretty safe bet no water is going to get in there so let's let that caulk dry up in the meantime I'll start putting some trim back on good thing that caulk is 30 minute rain ready because we're about to get a downpour here I got all the trim nailed back up still have to do some filling of nail holes and some painting and caulking but all the trim is back up I think it looks pretty good guys what do you think not bad hopefully this uh, will help the T111 last longer now that it's off the ground another nine inches all right pick it up after the weather passes and things dry out it's the next day got a break in the weather um, I caulked all the vertical trim pieces in place with some white caulk now I've got some house paint to make things match and blend in a little bit better okay I got the house color on all the caulk seams front and back now once everything dries I'm gonna go and I'm gonna touch up the white trim with a uh, white trim paint to match while we're waiting for paint to dry I think I'm gonna rebuild this shed door I'm tired of patching it I think I made a mistake when I built it by not leaving enough clearance between the door and um, the sill so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of build the door a little bit smaller and hopefully just put some kind of a door sweep on the bottom to give it clearance and keep the water off the bottom of the door so first step is to remove this door <clears throat> this could be comical because I remember this door being pretty heavy you guys get ready to laugh as I drop it <clears throat> the bottom hinge is already unhooked so I'm taking all but one screw out of the middle hinge I'm just gonna put three inch screws up there that's nice Okay, so we got all but one screw out on the top, got all the screws out on the top, there's just one screw holding the whole door in right now, with the door closed hopefully it doesn't fall, oh okay, did no such thing, cool, so the door should simply lift right out now, or drop out, okay so there's our opening I'm going to take this opportunity to paint where the hinges were you can see that there's no paint there so that T111 won't be long for this world like that let's get the uh, the door to the garage and take some measurements I just got back from Lowe's a minute ago bought two new sheets of T111 for the shed door which I hauled inside and is right there you can see where I've already repaired it once at that corner there then I realized when I got back that I have some spare T111 already and I think it's going to be the exact amount or very close to it that I need to rebuild this door so probably gonna end up returning that stuff because that stuff was not cheap I think it was maybe 35 40 bucks a sheet and I bought two sheets so um, let's start fabricating the door uh, I bought all new hinges and hardware I don't know if I'm going to use that yet can always take it back uh, but I want to build that 2x4 frame. Uh, that frame has worked out pretty well, so I'll probably just stick with that. And what I want to do is make it a little bit shorter than what was in there. Or maybe I'll just measure the rough opening and just subtract the height out a little bit. 
because again, I, I bought a door sweep to go on the bottom and I want to make sure that door sweep works properly and there's clearance for it because I don't want this thing wicking up water again. I measured the rough opening height in the shed and it was 71 and a quarter inches tall. And uh, this piece right here, it's actually probably just the right size. If I measure it, it's 70 and maybe three quarters, a tiny bit less. So I think that should leave plenty of clearance for the door sweep that I bought, which is one of these. Also available at Lowe's. So the way that'll work, this will screw onto the bottom of the door. Just for the moment, let's pretend the top is the bottom. So it'll go something like that, right? And if we look and see what our total height is now, we're at like 71 and a quarter. And now we're 71 and three eighths, I'm sorry. So that might be just around this spot on because that'll, these things bend quite a bit. Yeah, I think we'll keep that. So I'm gonna build it exactly the same size as the one we took out. I'm just gonna mount it higher in the opening to give this door sweep some room so that nothing else is touching the ground. Now you might be wondering why I'm rebuilding this two by four frame and uh, there's two reasons. One, you can see in that area there, maybe, that there's probably some rot. In fact, I did when I replaced that section down there, I knew that noticed some rot on the two by four. And I know that this T1 alone is glued to the two by four. So rather than fight with it, I'm just gonna build a new frame. And you can see to build it, I just built kind of a big picture frame. So you see I just 45, 45, every corner just like that. And then I did a two by four down the middle there where the two pieces of T111 meet. Let's build the frame. Okay, first step is to take two of those two by fours and uh, cut them each to a length of 70 and three quarter or thereabouts. On a 45, I'm gonna do that on the chop saw over there. Decided to move the chop saw down here just to minimize the mess. Let's get going with this. I job, bud. Square it up against the fence. First 45. Buddy, if you look at that, you're gonna go inside. Come on, you're going inside. You can't be near this. Come on. Go inside. Come on. Sorry, bud. Okay, now we'll turn it around and measure long point to long point. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. So I'm gonna cut, I cut that 45 there. I was gonna cut the second one, but then I realized, you know what? Let's cut the second 45 on two two by fours at the same time, just to make sure they're exactly the same length. So I'm gonna take another two by four, cut a 45 and just slap it right on top of that one. We'll cut both at once. Okay, so I cut the second one, just stacked it on top. Now we'll line them up really good or really well, I should say. And then we'll cut them at the other end. I think I'll shoot a screw in there, just a temporary one, just to hold them in place. Now we'll cut them to length. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Sorry, I didn't have the mic on. I don't know if you guys heard that. Measure twice, cut once. Let's cut them to length, 70 and three quarter.
Okay, got it all lined up and shot another screw at the other end just to, again, keep things together. Now with these, you always want to cut it a little bit long and sneak up on your measurement because they don't make a board stretcher. Exactly 70 and 3 quarter. Just going to repeat that process for that vertical section there and that vertical section there, the shorter pieces. Next you want to lay your frame on the ground, flat, flat surface preferably, just like this. And I'm going to glue and screw the corners. So I'm going to use, reuse those 3 inch deck screws that I used to hold the two pieces together. I'm going to start in one corner. I'm going to drill a pilot hole with a tapered cabinet bit. Then we'll shoot some glue on and then put our three inch deck screw in there to anchor it in place. Now you might need a shim or two to shim it off the floor just to get the spacing right. Take your time with this too. This is where it pays to be a perfectionist. All right, so I got a drill bit in there. Let's uh, get the glue out of the way. like that. Put some glue in the joint. Get our screw started. So I'm just using tight bond wood glue. And the glue is going to make it want to walk around so probably should get my other impact driver and stop changing bits. go. Now if you find that it's rotating, drill the opposite side and put a, a screw in from the opposite side too. That joint is locked solid now. Now just work your way around the perimeter and do the other three joints just like that. All right, guys, I got it glued and screwed and tattooed. Now I'm going to prime the crap out of it, and then I'm going to paint it. I'm going to be using some Kills 2 latex interior exterior. Okay, got this whole surface primed. I'll let this dry for a little bit, then I'm gonna put the T111 up on the sawhorses and, paint and uh, prime the crap out of that too, front and back. Okay guys, so a couple hours has gone by. I've done a lot, a lot of painting, more than I 
would care to admit. So we got the old door closest to the garage door opening there. We have the new door with a thousand coats of paint on it right here. The panels are not fastened down, but what I'm doing right now is I'm aligning the grooves in the panels with the old door so that things look normal. I don't want them to be out of line with the rest of the shed. So we'll get that done. Uh, we'll trim off the XST-111 and then we'll screw it down. Okay, got everything aligned just the way I want it. Now I'm gonna go screw this T111 down to the frame and then we're gonna run a circular saw around the perimeter and just trim off the excess. Okay, got the T111 fastened to the frame. Now I'm gonna take a circular saw and just run down and trim off that excess on both sides. Obviously, obviously gonna have to do some painting again. Can't wait, hate painting. Okay, it's the next morning. I put about 40,000 more coats of paint on this thing. Also got the hinges fastened. What I did is I spaced those hinges up another inch from where the old hinges were, just so I don't have to reuse the same screw holes in the shed. I don't want to do that because the, the door, the old door, was not quite hanging level, or not, it may have been level, but it wasn't hanging such that it would stay open. You had to like kind of block it open every time, and that was pretty annoying, so. Got a little bit more paint drying here. <clears throat> I took my planer and I just shaved off a little bit of this edge here because it was sticking out a little bit. Pretty soon we're ready to install this thing, hopefully. I do have a third hinge that'll go in the middle, uh, but I'm gonna put that on after these two hinges are bolted in, the door is, the door is in place and I'm happy with it. Now before I do bring the door outside, I'm gonna install that bottom threshold that's hopefully gonna keep water off the bottom of the door, keep the bottom of the door off the ground for sure. While the paint's drying, I measured up these uh, door sweeps, and I measured it so that, well, there's gonna be one piece that's short and one piece that's long. Probably a joke buried in there somewhere. And I measured it such that there's enough screw holes on each one, so. This one I marked at the edge there with a Sharpie. And the reason why I didn't just use the full piece is because had I done that, then this would have lost that hole right there. I guess, I mean, I could have just, I guess, screwed in a new hole, but these are slotted so you can move them up and down. So I'm gonna trim those with some tin snips. They say to cut it with a hacksaw, but this seems like it'd be a little bit easier. This isn't exact science anyway. Cuts just fine with these. Okay, I got the door out here. I looked at the instructions for the, the door threshold and they say that they want the seal to be compressed about an eighth of an inch. It says it fills an eighth inch gap. So, you know, three eighths minus one eighth is a, is a quarter. So I have these quarter inch thick paint stirrers and I'm gonna use the spacers on the bottom of the door just to elevate the door off the threshold a bit. Um, got some screws in my pocket, got a level here. So time to get started. Probably gonna do this off camera because it's gonna be probably pretty boring for you guys. Or maybe you'll get to watch me fumble with it and I'll just double or triple speed it. That'd be something different for Joe's garage.
and like a complete and total idiot, I left my impact driver inside the shed. So now I got to go get it again. All right, got one screw each in the top and bottom hinge just to kind of secure things. Uh, the door seems to open and close just fine. Uh, don't doesn't really seem to want to close itself, which is great. That was making me crazy. Uh, show you guys a quick demo. So it opens and stays. And it closes nicely. Opens and closes nicely. Opens and closes nicely. Now we got to put the rest of the, the hinge bolts in, or hinge screws rather. Now, one thing I like to do with door hinges in general, I like to use a at least one long screw per hinge to make sure it goes deep into the structure. So I'm going to use a three-inch wood screw, uh, one on the top hinge, one on the bottom hinge. All right, guys, I made a mistake. There's not enough clearance on this side of the door to fit that door seal. There's maybe, I don't know, probably just under a quarter of an inch of clearance, and I can't really get any more clearance just because of the way the frame is built. Um, I could take the door off and plane it, um, which is probably what you should do if you're doing this project, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna go that crazy. I'm beat, and I got five, six years out of this first door, and hopefully with the amount of paint and primer and whatnot and caulking that I put on this door, I'll get twice that. But again, if uh, you're doing this project for yourself, uh, I would recommend taking the time and, and taking the door off and planing it, but I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do though is install that third door hinge, so let's get that going. And it's raining again. Jeez, can't catch a break with this weather. Good thing the paint's dry. Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you the finished product the next day or maybe the day after that. The weather's been kind of crazy here. So I haven't really been able to do too much with the shed. But I wanted to show you finished product. So it came out pretty nice. The trim board along the bottom is a little dirty. That's because of recent rain. Not much I can do about that except hose it down. But I think it came out pretty nice. Got a new shed door with no rot. Got new T1, I'm sorry, new uh, PVC vinyl trim along the bottom. Got to do a bit of touch-ups on the vertical trim. But that can be another day. It's quitting time, well, it's beer 30. Anyway, I think that's a wrap. If you guys like this video, you found it helpful or this helps you somewhere in your one of your T111 projects, please let me know, share your story. Uh, please subscribe, stay safe, and thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.